Yeah, both teams uh, did not start the team or start shooting in this game very well. A lot of misses. But now San Francisco is 42 percent. Kazada got him going. And Gonzaga shooting two of ten for the game. So they're at 20 percent downs. Three ball. That's pure from the corner. 14 7. And that's what it takes. It only takes one shot to get the, the rest of the team going. And Micah really did a nice job standing there, waiting for the ball, catching it, and shooting it. Maybe that's the start for the Zags. And you can say what you want the other night against Santa Clara about Gonzaga's offense. I thought it was really the defense that was so impressive, and that's just pure energy. And a foul call here. Oh, this is on USF. This will go against number 23, James Morgan. His first four on San Francisco. Well, with actually, they give it to Christian Hernandez, 21. Okay. Well, I thought the Zags did a nice job on uh, Casada though on his pick and roll with Morgan, because Casada is so good at getting around the corner. Josh showed Matt, uh, Matt Bolden was guarding, went right on his hip, and got there. I didn't see where Christian. I was watching the ball. I didn't see what Christian Hernandez had done to draw the foul. Dave. Oh, two threes in a row for Gonzaga. And just like that, a 10-point lead down to four. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Two shots, 10-point lead down to four. Oh, and, and he's just... stripped by Pargo. Oh, behind the back, and he draws the foul. And now Pargo's into his teammates saying, let's go. Yeah, what a defensive effort on Pargo. Just was riding the young man. Kwame Vaughn down the floor and then turned him at the one time. And when he turned, you don't turn your back on Jeremy Pargo because this is what happens. And then look, he's deja vu, Tennessee. But gets fouled. Go, go to the line. Well, Greg Heister and Craig Elo were courtside at the McCarthy Athletic Center in Spokane, Washington, San Francisco, USF, with an early four point lead on Gonzaga. But moments ago, it was a 10 point lead. Gonzaga hit a couple of threes, and they've drawn it to 14 10. Jeremy Pargo, one of the great players now in the history of the West Coast Conference, the reigning WCC Player of the Year. Craig, he's, he's growing and, and uh, going up the list as far as all time assist leaders in the league, now at number 10. And you see he'll be number nine here soon. Yeah, and I'm looking at the list in uh, my book here. And Matt Santangelo from Gonzaga is number three. Blake Steps, number five. John Stockton, number eight. So the Zags really making their mark on the assist column in the WCC, having that many players in the top ten. And he now needs uh, seven more points uh, to become uh, the 27th leading scorer in the history of Gonzaga. Going ahead of Jared Davis. Jared is sitting at 27th now with uh, 1,054 points. Pargo with 1,048 with that free throw. Lowhorn going for the dunk, and it's blocked by Heitfeld. And Heitfeld made the mistake of letting Lowhorn slip the screen, but he stayed with him and caught up. Downs off on the three, but it was a good look. Kazada, Lowhorn, fake on Heitfeld, drives, short jumper is good. And Lowhorn. Now with four points. And Pargo right back for Gonzaga. Spins, kick out to Bolden. Today, now to Downs. Inside Heitfeld. Deflected away by Dior Lohorn. Lohorn did a nice job getting around in front of Josh Heitfeld. But there's the slip. But look, Josh doesn't quit. Chases Dior down and blocks the shot. So that's excellent effort on the defensive end. Because a lot of times when you get beat, what do you do? You just quit on the play. Josh didn't quit on the play. Pargo getting a rest. Dimitri Goodson, the freshman out of Spring, Texas, in for Gonzaga now. Number three, Bolden driving, lay in. And it's a three point game. Bolden with his first bucket of the game. It's not quite a 2 3 zone like we're used to saying a zone. Guys are getting out, so when they get out, you can spread them out a little bit. That time, the defense was spread out too far, and Matt found a seam that led him right to the rim. Blake Wallace with it, number two, into the corner to Lowhorn. Heitfeld certainly has a size advantage on Lowhorn. Boy, there's some good offense there. Lowhorn with a lay-in. Yeah, he caught the ball originally too far and out of his comfort zone, went out and screened, and when he did, Heitfeld jumped and doubled, and the rotation was too slow, and Dehorn got a really good feel for the game. He went right to the rim. 
Heitfeld off badly on that three. Goodson with the rebound now looks for help. Down at the Heitfeld, Bolden into the corner, down for three! Micah Downs now with six points. And Micah doing a nice job coming off the bench, and what you want to do when you come off the bench is change the game in some way, and Micah's first shot got Gonzaga off their snide and started them rolling on the offensive end. We had a five-second call there on USF. We should point out, Rex Walter showed up at USF in San Francisco, and the first thing he did was bring back the old logo. Yeah. Kind of the look of the days in the 1950s when this program won uh, an NIT championship, which in the 1940s was, in essence, the national championship, and then they won two NCAA titles with Bill Russell in the 50s. Yeah, uh, 55 and 56, great team. Casey Jones was on that, Bill Russell. Of course, they went on to Boston and played, but yeah, they went with the U period, S period, F period, and that was the old style that won them championships, and Rex Walters being a fan of basketball and the traditionalist decided to do that. Pump fake by Day, and then he drops it in from 17 feet out. Pretty impressive when a 6'11 guy can pump fake a guy off of his feet. This is Wallace for three. That one's off. Bolden now on the move. Goods into his right. Bolden fakes. And now kick out to Day. Three ball. Good. Well, again, the defense makes USF take a quick shot. And then they, they get the rebound. GU gets the rebound and takes off on the other end. And Austin Day catches the ball from Matt Bolden in rhythm. And he just knocked one down from the, uh, the previous possession, knocks another one down. Hernandez at the top of the board. Gonzaga on a 17 to 4 run, Craig. They've done it with a three point shot, or at least the attempts. 13 out of their 18 shots in this game from behind the arc. Yeah, and I'm telling you, it's because of what the S USF defense has given them. The swing pass from one side of the floor to the other makes it too quick for the defense to recover the skip pass over the top and that's what GU's done because they're in a zone now they're out of it they're playing man to man because GU is doing such a good job skip passing over the top they're four of 12 from behind the arc but they missed their first six so they're now four of their last six well that's a mark of a good team not worrying about their percentage and to continue to shoot and put the pressure on the defense Lohorn guarding Day. Good defense there, but Day hits the shot. That was great defense by Lohorn. Yeah, he was right there. Even on the hard dribble uh, Austin took, Lohorn was able to get his hand in his face, but Day, using that size, gets the shot over the top of him and then blocks the shot in the corner on Peter Smith. Yeah, Day averaging two blocks a game. And now Goodson trailing. The gray down from the corner again. That one's off the front of the rim. He was knocked to the floor. No call. Ira Brown had it. He and Smith battle, and Goodson runs it down for Gonzaga. Goodson into the middle, goes up strong, and there's a blocking foul call. Well, we're not pressed for entertainment right now, are we? I guess a lot we're not. of action. 727 to go. Gonzaga has grabbed the lead by five. And Martin Luther King Day was established as a national holiday in the U.S. in 1986. We will celebrate that day on Monday. And, and I got to tell you, I, I've been to Memphis, and I know the, the Gonzaga yeah. Bulldogs have been to Memphis, and the hotel where Dr. King was uh, assassinated is the exact same way it was on that day. The coffee cups, yes. everything, the shag carpet. I mean, it's quite a little tour. If you go to Memphis, make sure you stop there. Yeah, you have to stop and see it. And from MLK Day on Monday, kind of seemed like uh, it's Austin Day's day today, isn't it? 12 points. He's got the block. And, and look at the way he's climbing the, the block list here. Yeah, there's some big guys in front of him, Turioff, Calvary, and Gord. But Austin Day, he does it in a different way. He kind of sets the guy up and then uses his length catches up and blocks the shot. Those other guys, the Gords and the Turioffs, they kind of used their bodies and stayed right in the lane and blocked them. So Austin does it a, a different way than the, the leaders do. Austin tied with Corey Violet right now for the Gonzaga block list. 7.27 to play. Goodson one of two from the line, and we get a timeout in the corner. Gonzaga trapped number one Kwame Vaughn in there, and the freshman out of Oakland. And left.